here at Rua Kaka Beach. Well, here I am. It's uh, just a wee painting adventure today. We're uh, only a couple of hundred meters from my house. Got my easel on my knee here. Just started. I thought I'd record a little bit of it for you. Got all my gear laid out. It's a beautiful evening. Uh, a little bit windy. So I'm tucked here in the sand dune and I'm really just going to try and get the, the real subtle beautiful greys in the painting today. You just look at that, you know, all the subtlety in those greys. I mean the camera doesn't pick it up as well as the eye. But there's a lot of information there and it's very subtle, very subtle differences. What I'm really trying to do today is just capture exactly the colors that I'm seeing. And normally, or a lot of the time, I, I really push my colors uh, to try and make a more vibrant painting. Uh, but today I really wanted to go with the grays and, and all the subtlety that's in that. And the, the reason I did that is because yesterday I went out and did this painting of... Uh, of a milking shed which is just down the road from me and I really pushed the colors in this one um, and and changed the colors a lot as you can see from the photo the uh, the grass is green you know and it, I've really shifted the color and the lighting around a lot in this painting and when I was finished with it I wasn't that happy with it I mean it looks dramatic but um, it was lacking a lot of the subtlety that uh, I was wanting to put in it. So today I wanted to really concentrate on just getting down exactly what I'm seeing. So I think what happened with this farmyard painting and the reason why I'm not as happy with it as I could be is that I I tried to invent too much and and so I lose a lot of subtlety when I do that, you know, when you're not painting what you're observing, when you're just making it up from symbols or from information in your own head, you, you lose a lot of the uh, subtlety that is there for the taking right in front of you. And I see beginners do this a lot, you know, they want a vibrant painting, so they push all the colors and it ends up looking... Um, just a little bit childish or you know too the colors too garish uh, not not enough grays in the color they lose lose touch with the realism of the scene and I do this a lot with my painting I find myself doing that a lot so it's really good to knuckle down and paint the colors exactly as you're seeing them it's a really good exercise because once again it's learning the rules so that you can break them or so that you can bend them and push them so for instance now that I've painted this Ruakaka beach scene in just the same colors that I saw it in I could then revisit that in a studio painting and start playing with the colors so I've got this base to work from. It's a very strong solid base where I've got the colors as I know they appear naturally and now I can decide how I want to push that if, I, if at all. Whereas if I'd painted this scene uh, pushing the color and you know building from what was in my head rather than what's in front of me I wouldn't have a strong foundation to start a, a painting from. I'd be without the that solid experience uh, I would be building on the sand rather than on the rock and again as with everything you know this is just my opinion it's I you know I have a vision of where I want my painting to go and so I'll do things like this set myself tasks which point me in that direction so you might think you know the you prefer the the colorful one of, of the farmyard and might find this one of the beach that I've done uh, you know too a bit boring so and that's fine I mean that may not be your direction 
uh, but I just encourage you to look at your own direction and see where you want to go and do the hard yards, do those uh, these tasks, these little studies which push your work where you want to go. I'm very lucky to be able to paint in a place like this. I think uh, the luckiest thing for me today was that uh, my goodly goodly wife Helen had gone out and bought me a, a new bottle of anti-mosquito spray which I put on my ankles before I started and by the end of the painting I had dozens of these little things stuck to my legs and uh, but they weren't biting me so that allowed me the peace of mind to actually finish this little painting so that was very cool thank you Helen so if you've learned anything from this little video I uh, hope it's that if you're painting outdoors you got to take mosquito spray with you. Okay, that's it for this little painting adventure. I'll see you on the next one.